Hi everyone and welcome to Name Hero. In this video I want to talk about how to back up your VPS, your virtual private server. If you're not doing this then you need to really pay attention to what I'm saying and, and um, implement at least one of the three backup strategies that I'm going to demonstrate in this video. Um, unfortunately, we see far too often people that will buy a VPS will neglect this step. Uh, unfortunately, VPSs are not included in our complimentary backups here at Name Hero. All of our shared web hosting accounts and all of our reseller hosting accounts are automatically backed up each night, but our VPSs are not. And that's because there's a little bit of cost involved in that because essentially we have to back up all of the data that's on your hard drive. So if you're not backing up your VPS, I really hope you're backing up somewhere because in case something would happen in dealing with web servers and computers and technology, it could be something such as a, a um, operating system crash. I mean, stuff could happen. And if it does, you just want to be prepared. I know at Name Hero, we've got a manual, a disaster manual, um, that if we actually would have a problem with a, a server or a, um, or a cloud instance, you know, we have a whole manual that we've written internally on the steps we take to resolve it. And inside of this, we also have our backup plan and how we actually conduct these backups and prepare for a disaster. Now, of course, we prepare for the worst and we always hope for the best. Thankfully, here at Name Hero, there's only one time I can ever remember us ever having to use a backup um, from a complete server. And we've been in existence going on three years now. But the thing is, it could happen. And it could happen tomorrow. It could happen a year from now. It could happen five years from now. But you want to make sure that you do have backups on your VPS regardless. So if you don't have one of these three ways, then you're pretty much setting your VPS, your business up for, for suicide. Because if something would happen, then you would be um, in some big, big trouble. So let me demonstrate the three ways that you can go about backing up your VPS. So on your screen right now is our main control panel here at Name Hero. Once you log in, you hover over the name, click log in, and you're here. Um, you're going to click Cloud Web Hosting. I'm going to select my Hero 2 Gigabyte. And from here, I can look at my first set of backups right here, backups. I can click here and just give it a second to pull it up. And I can see the backups that have been taken of this server off-site. So at Name Hero, we, allow, we automatically will back up your data if you, if you pay for it um, each night. You don't have to do anything other than just buy the option when you sign up. Um, if you click here, click here, and we go to deploy, I'll show you where this is. So when you're deploying your new server, I'm just gonna use namehero.org. When you go to deploy your new server, you can see the option down in here, backup plan. You want to enable this to daily, and then how many days you want is the cost, and this is per month and the cost. So for us to back it up is $4.95 for this server. Um, for two days is $8.95. So $8.95 a month is not that much money, and what it can save you from is huge. So I highly recommend it at least one day, if nothing else. And so these are server backups complete, complete server backups. So it's not only your accounts on the server, it's the actual server itself. So if you needed to restore, you could simply click restore. It's gonna say, are you sure? And you click yes. And it's automatically gonna begin restoring the latest backup. And you can see here the latest backup was taken at um, seven o'clock this morning for the server. So that's um, you know really useful to have. Um, say something would happen that maybe multiple accounts on the server got maybe wiped out, or maybe you had a, a system operating error. Maybe you updated something and an update did not go well. Uh, for whatever reason, something really bad on your server happened, on your VPS happened. You can just click here and restore it, and it's going to restore. It takes about 15, 20 minutes for six gigabytes. Um, the larger the server, the longer it's going to take. Um, I've seen ones that are like, if you have, if you'd have like 500 or 600 gigabytes of data, it may take 12, 14 hours to restore it. But the good thing is the data is there and it's going to restore. Um, so that's the easiest way to back up your server is just enable that op, just order this option when you build the ser server and it's all set. You don't have to, you just set it and forget it. Um, if you didn't order it, you can go into, um, I believe it's in here right here. You can go to upgrade downgrade options and you can see daily backup plan daily and is right now one day you can add it or change it here. Okay. You could, you could change your um, backup options inside of here if you already have a server. So that's going to be the easiest way to do. Uh, if you're selling web hosting on your server, I really recommend doing that uh, to enabling these backups. These are completely off site, meaning that if the data center that your actual server node is in, if that blows up, 
then the backup is going to be withheld and you're going to be able to restore that on another system. And so at maximum, you know, you're, if you have 500 gigabytes of data, for example, maximum downtime uh, to redeploy is just a time for that data to resync to the new server. Um, so you're looking at maybe 12 hours of downtime, whereas if you had to rebuild that from scratch, it might never even come back online. The other way that's more common to back up a server is inside Webhost Manager. So on your screen now is our Webhost Manager, and I'm going to click Backup Configuration. So this is a module built into Webhost Manager that will automatically back up your accounts each night. But by default, it's disabled. It's disabled because it uses hard drive space. So Webhost Manager, the folks over there, they disable it, and, and they rely on you to enable it so you can tell the system what and where to back up. So to enable it, you're just going to click Enable. We're going to scroll down to Global Settings, and you're going to see we've got um, three different types, Compressed, Uncompressed, or Incremental. Um, I recommend the Compressed or the Incremental. Um, the Incremental is just only um, the backup information that has changed since the last backup, or Compressed is going to compress each file, and um, it's going to back up everything, or compress each account into a nice little zip file, uh, which is condenses it. And so if you're using 6 gigabytes, then it's going to condense to about 3 gigabytes, so it's, it saves uh, money. So we go down here, and you can look, there's some checks that have to take place. So one, it's going to make sure that the minimum disk space is 5%. If you have 5% of disk space left, the backup's not going to run because it's going to fill your hard drive up and potentially cause a crash. You know, and you can change this by percentage or megabytes. Personally, I would probably like to see you up this to maybe 10%. If you're only running on 10% left, you probably should um, you know, do something about that. Add more space, scale up, um, which I'm going to get to in a... Um, either shortly or in another video. I haven't, haven't decided yet. Um, but you want to check that. Next is the maximum destination timeout. And so um, I'm going to show you how to set up a destination for these backups. And so if this amount of time elapses, then the backup's going to stop because it's timed out. So I'll just leave that default. Maximum restore timeout, um, just leave that default as well. Scheduling and retention. So this is important because this is the days that you want it to back up. So by default, it's going to go to backup daily, and it's going to go to every other day. Um, I like to back up daily and I like to back up every day and I only like to back up and retain on this one I like to retain one or two days um, because remember each backup is going to take up data so on especially on this two gigabyte server um, you're looking at 30 gigabytes of space so we're using six already so it's going to use another probably three for backing up so it's going to use our disk usage so we don't want to get too crazy with retention if you want to add all the way up to seven days retention then you need to have a larger vps so you'd probably want to be on our hero six or our hero eight if you enable a full weeks Okay, um, strictly enforced retention regards to backup success. I probably wouldn't recommend that. If the backups don't succeed, then you probably don't want to keep them anyways. Next is a weekly backup or a monthly backup. So this is the same as daily, but it's just going to take it once a week. Um, or it's going to take one here once a month. The one, first of the month or the 15th of the month. If you're doing every day and you're retaining two days, there's really no need for the weekly or monthly. If we go down here, this here is to back up the accounts. So you can back up all the accounts on the system or just the system files. Of course, you want to back up the accounts because that's the important part of the, of the server. So if I click Select Users, you're going to see on this example server I have, there's only two, and they're, they're default by on after I enable it. So those are going to back up. Um, if maybe you had some accounts on there that were either customers that maybe, maybe the customer doesn't want it to be backed up, uh, maybe it's a throwaway site that you don't use, you can maybe just select that. Or maybe you have a site with a lot of usage that you back up elsewhere. So you can save disk space there. Backup suspended accounts, if you're web hosting, then you probably don't want to do this. If the user is suspended, then they're either violating your terms or they're not paying you, which is a violation of your terms. So why should you back up their data for them? If they're not paying, they're not paying. So why, why use twice your resources? So I keep that disabled. Access logs, you don't need to back up the access logs. They get tremendously big and they will take up a lot of space. Um, so don't worry about that. Bandwidth data, if you are web hosting, you want to enable this. It's default enabled, but if it doesn't matter about the bandwidth data, just disable it. Um, local DNS, when this enabled, when enabled, this option confines the domain lookup to the server only and does not query the DNS cluster. Uh, so if you're clustering this VPS with another VPS for DNS, um, you would enable that, but we're just going to keep it to say it can be much quicker. Next is system files. This is not needed to restore the accounts, but it's needed to restore the whole server. 
Okay, so it's highly recommended that you do back up the system files. There's not that many um, because if the whole server would crash, you'd want these files to restore the whole server to way it, the way it was. So this way, you've already got the backup you've ordered from us. You've got that covered. The good thing about this backup system is you can restore per account. So if just one of the accounts need restored, you can type in and restore it. You can download one of those account backups and just pull the file you need. So that, that that's the advantage over our whole system backups. Because our whole system backups, it's all or nothing. This here, you can kind of cherry pick. Databases, MySQL. Um, here you can do each account's MySQL, the entire MySQL directory, or the per account and entire MySQL directory. Um, I like to do per account and entire MySQL directory so I get everything. I, I want everything backed up in MySQL personally. Default backup directory, this is the local backup directory on the server. Um, slash backup is default. Now, this remember, this is going to use your disk space on your server. If you want, you can order what's called block storage from us and we can add storage to this partition. So we can add storage to the backup partition if you need it. I believe it's about $30 a month for 100 gigabytes. So maybe that's an option for you as well. If you're interested in that, feel free to submit a sales ticket. We'd be more than happy to quote you. A lot of our customers, they will use, um, they will just use the, the disk space on their, on their server if they have it. And then if they outgrow it, then they will buy some block storage and, and it let, allow us to partition that drive for them so they can back up on the server as well. This here will actually mount a new backup drive if needed. Um, so it will actually, if it requires another drive or mount point because it's full, it will automatically do it. I personally don't enable that. I'm more of a manual guy. I want to define where I'm backing up to and no, I don't want to rely on the server. So I always disable that. Next is destination type. This is important as well. This will automatically send your data to another location. So let's check it out. Amazon S3. This is my favorite and this is what I recommend. Amazon S3 is very, very affordable. I'm talking about maybe $4 a month for a couple hundred gigabytes of data. So Amazon's my favorite because you just go over to Amazon. If you have an AWS account, um, you log in. If not, you create one. But then you just click Create New Destination. So this is the third point in our backup system. First is the backups that you order from us. It's all or nothing. It's all the server or nothing. You restore it in the interface point and click. The second is the on-server backups, what I'm showing you. The third is taking these on-server backups and sending them over to Amazon. So here it wants a destination name. So we would just call this destination Amazon. Do you want to transfer the system backups? Well, probably. This is the folder that you're going to use inside of Amazon. So you can just put whatever you call the server, maybe alpha, and it'll put it in there. Now this is the bucket of the Amazon, the remote destination, and you can just put server, whatever. Next, the access key and the secret access key. These two things you get inside of your Amazon account. So when you log into your Amazon AWS account, you click S3 and you will assign an access key and secret, a key ID and secret access key um, for it. Very easy, very straightforward. If you, if you need help with it, you can submit a ticket and give us your Amazon login and we'll do it for you. Or you can simply ask Amazon, but it's very easy and straightforward. Um, I, I'm not going to demonstrate going through that because I don't have a demo Amazon account at this time um, and I can't go into mine for security reasons. But it's very easy to get those two um, credentials. It's just like a username and password password pretty much. It's, it's all it is, is a username and password for your Amazon account, but using their keys and secret access keys. Um, and then timeout, just save that um, at default. That will give you the third point. And so each night when this backup module here runs, it's going to automatically throw it over to Amazon too. So now you're going to have on off-server backups with us. You're going to have on-server backups. And now you're going to have Amazon. If you don't want to use Amazon, you can use FTP and you can back up to another server. So maybe you have another VPS with us. Maybe you have another VPS with another provider. Maybe you have some cheap dedicated server. I know here at Name Heroes, sometimes when we want to back up large amounts of data, we'll find a data center somewhere around the United States with really cheap servers. And we might buy five or 10 just to use for data backups. You can do that as well. Send it via FTP. Google Drive. This is new from Webhost Manager. If you have a Google Drive account, you can send it there. Um, if you have an additional local directory, so maybe you have another directory on your server. I don't really recommend that. If you're going to do it once, then you probably don't need to do it um, again. Um, you have rsync, uh, which can go to another server. 
SFTP, Secure FTP, WebDAV, or then you have Custom. So you've got a couple different options for additional destinations. Uh, personally, I recommend Amazon. I know a lot of other people like Google Drive as well, but I'm an Amazon S3 fan. Uh, so that's what I recommend going to. Uh, but by doing that, you would just save your configuration after you're, you're finished configuring all that. And then it will automatically, it'll save. And then it'll automatically just start running. That's all you have to do. You just have to configure it. And then you don't have to hassle with it each day and all that. It's, it's going to be done. So then tomorrow, if you come in and you need to start restoring stuff, you click backup restoration and you can click on the backup date which I can't click on it because I don't have any, and you could restore by account. You could res restore directories. See, look, you can restore subdomains, mail configuration, MySQL. Um, you can do all that in here. So it, it, it doesn't, it baffles me. When I see in our ticket center, I see someone with a VPS me a ticket. Hey, I need you to restore this backup. Well, did you take one? No, I didn't. Why? I thought you did. No, we don't for VPSs. VPSs is a virtual private server. It's your own server. We don't back it up for you. You have to do it yourself. As you see, it's very simple to do, um, but because it uses data, it uses your hard drive, we don't want to go filling up your hard drive, so we let you do it. We do let you decide if you want to put it all in your hard drive or if you want to buy block storage or if you want to send it somewhere else. Um, so we let you, you're very flexible at how you can do this, but you just have to do it. Um, you're, like I said, you're committing um, business or website suicide by not having backups. You want to have a good backup plan. I recommend all three of these. Uh, just so if something happens that you are protected and you're covered. Over my last 20 years of working online, I've always done this. I've always kept really, really good backups because it's always been a big fear of mine um, that something could happen to the server, an intruder could get in, or something could happen. So I've always wanted to be covered with backups. As I said, our shared and reseller accounts, we do one night complimentary. If you want more, then we offer the option to purchase more. Um, but with VPSs, you have to set it up yourself and um, this is how you do it. And, and like I said, it's not that big of a deal, but it is something that needs to be done. If you have any questions on this or need our techs to log in and help you configure your VPS for backup, feel free to log a new ticket, give us a call or shoot us a live chat. We'd be more than happy to help you set this up. If you are hosting clients, you're hosting other customers, you probably want to do this because if something would happen to your customer's data, you know, they can potentially take legal action against you. So you want to make sure that you have, um, you know, good data, good backups. Um, just be smart with it. So let us know if you have any questions, but thanks so much for watching. Enjoy and sleep sound at night knowing you've got your backups on your VPS.